a 15-year-old is brought to the ER on examination, his right lower limb is deformed and swollen around the knee. At full extension, there is valgus instability, suggestive of knee dislocation. The patient is in great pain, and there is a concern for concomitant vascular and nervous injuries. Palpation of the dorsalis pedis artery reveals a normal pulse. However, neurological examination reveals impaired dorsiflexion of the foot with decreased sensation in the space between digits 1 and 2. Which of the following nerves is affected? Pause and answer the question. Here, answer is A. Deep paromal nerve innervates the muscles responsible for dorsiflexion in the anterior compartment of the leg. It also provides for the cutaneous innervation of the space between digits 1 and 2, whereas femoral nerve innervates muscles in the anterior compartment of the thigh and the skin of the medial aspect of the leg by a continuing branch, the saphenous nerve. The superficial peronal nerve innervates the lateral compartment of the leg and muscles responsible for foot aversion. The tibial nerve innervates the posterior compartment of the leg and the muscles responsible for plantar flexion. A 22-year-old is rushed to the ER suffering from multiple stab wounds made by an ice pick. A third-year medical student rotating is puzzled by the sight of a milky white substance exuding from a stab wound just superior to the right sternoclavicular joint. Which of the following structures is possibly injured at this location? Pause and answer the question. Here, the answer is D. Right lymphatic trunk is ruptured and chyle is exuding from the wound. Blood would flow from a wound involving common carotid artery or internal jugular vein. A stabbing lesion of the cupola of the right lung would result in pneumothorax. Thoracic duct is carry chyle. However, the thoracic duct drains into the bifurcation of the internal jugular and subclavian veins on the left side, above the left sternoclavicular joint. A 24-year-old student is brought to the ER after being found in a ditch where he had lain overnight after being hit by a car. He complains of severe pain in the left arm and examination reveals a broken humerus. Neurological examination reveals that the patient can extend the elbow but displays inability to supinate the elbow when it is extended. Patient also has wrist drop and very weak hand grasp. The neurological lesion is likely localized at which of the following locations? Pause and answer the question. Here, the answer is C. Wrist drop and weak hand grasp indicate that the patient has a lesion of the radial nerve, most likely at the distal third of the humerus, sparing the innervation of the triceps brachii but affecting the supinator. Because the patient can extend the elbow, the integrity of the posterior cord and posterior divisions of the brachial plexus is preserved. Lesion of the radial nerve at the mid-forearm and wrist would spare the innervation of the supinator.